Good Friday evening, RC After Hours fans. Ooh, turn that music down a little aggressively, but whatever. So we've got the intro music, we've got the $65 studio, and it is Friday evening. Normally I do this on a Sunday, but decided that uh, due to scheduling and everything, I would go ahead and start the first podcast uh, and try it out. Uh, I'm looking at a little latency here, but I'll get it all under control over time. If it sounds good and everything, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, yeah, so obviously if anybody watched the last podcast, there were some pretty dramatic changes to the RC After Hours lineup with Chris announcing his uh, his departure. Uh, and that had been something we'd foreseen coming down the road for a little bit, but uh, and, and that is life. And uh, you know what? We're going to keep marching forward. Um, thank you to everybody who chimed in and sent little uh, notes to the podcast asking while well, the show to carry on. And, uh, you know, and that that is our goal and our ambition and everything. So or my goal, my ambition, I guess, right now. Um, so part of this podcast, no reason there are no guests or no co-host or anything like that. It's just me establishing what I foresee and what my vision of the upcoming podcast is going to be like. Um, and yeah, so there's there's a lot to talk about, a lot to consider. Um, and so this is what I want to spend this little bit of this podcast doing and discussing. Um, we are, and, uh, yeah, there we go. I, I see the chat window. I have to uh, do that. Um, and I put out a poll earlier in the week, and I'm going to try and pop the chat window up. And there was some really val- valuable feedback about, as far as um, what everybody was expecting. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to be able to see the chat window and read the comments as we go. Uh it's, it's rather interesting to see people's perspective. Uh, the poll was basically uh, YouTube versus Facebook as far as the live stream goes. And one very valuable comment from someone was focus in on the audio show it, it, and in the end. So, and hey, you know, I have no guests tonight. I'm not listening to any music, so I can actually take off my headphones and everybody can see my ears uh, who are on the live stream. So it is a very important thing to do and uh, kind of focus on um, the... Um, the podcast and kind of a rebuild, kind of a refresh. So I had a really good time sitting down and discussing and, and thinking about what the show should be going into the future. And that's uh, that's part of this dialogue. Uh, obviously, changing it over to the YouTube feed. Um, and I decided that uh, just use my channel because it's got a little bit more uh, uh, followership behind it. And I've got all the information. And, uh, you know, why not? Uh, and if there are, you know, people watching, great. Great. If there's not, not going to worry about it because the primary focus of the show obviously is the audio recording, and uh, that's something I will work very hard on making sure we understand. And when we're talking about someone's, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, when we're discussing events and so forth, we'll we'll have it uh, very audio centric. So we'll go into details describing stuff. So the audio listener has a better idea obviously the visual game of it the uh the the podcast is really good uh to see it from a visual end of it i love the interaction with the fans and everything we've got a whole whack of people already coming on uh hey andrew newton's even on hello sir victor and jim and so forth uh steve is there as well um better than saturday mornings or sunday mornings so someone asked me about that too um because it's just me I'm not going to worry too much about a fluid time. Now, traditionally, I've done the Friday flying updates on a um, on a Friday night, obviously. And I really don't have a problem with turning the podcast into, I mean, obviously, it's the after-hour show. And I, I really don't have an issue doing the show in the evening because that means I can get out, theoretically, on Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings and fly. And that's, that's part of the hobby. And that was one of the things about the Sunday morning, um, Sunday morning shows, so... Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if I can get out flying, I'm going to do more for what we want to discuss and what we want to push in the hobby and everything. So part of the thing is, and part of the conversation I want to have with the fans, um, is, is the podcast and what I want to drive for it. I had plenty of people saying, Hey, are you looking for a co-host? And I want to spin that around on a lot of these guys coming up because these are some fantastic people in our community. And I want to start a hot seat. I really want to come up with some those those 
the, those those hot seat questions. Uh, we've done stuff like this in the past, but now I really want to ratchet this up, and I want to you know have uh, have those uh, you know cue cards on hand and bang off ten rapid fire questions and stuff like this, and really get back into. To I guess the grassroots of the hobby. We've had a lot of fun with the manufacturers. I really enjoyed and appreciated that time with the manufacturers, but at the same time, um, I think we ignored the community a little too much. And with all the various uh, um, uh, various changes in the industry and everything, I really want to try and focus back in on the community. Uh, Cloudspitter24 said, it might be nice to have the folks from Horizon on the show. We have tried and repeatedly tried, and uh, I guess I could stop saying we, but it, you know, but Chris Chris was, and we frequently had email exchange with Matt Andron. Um, maybe I will drop into, and I still want to get these manufacturers. Alpha from, from Motion RC is awesome. I would love to talk to uh, the folks at Hot King again about some of the more recent products that they've released and some of the changes. Um, I know uh, Toby has uh, before offered to come on the show. And even Steve, we'll get him back because he is still big into the hobby. Um, kind of pitching me the you know the RC After Hours from Australia because he is huge in the, with the PMAC group. Or PMAC's not the right name, but I think that's the name of their field. You know, so he's he's back and enjoying the hobby too, right? And, and doing his thing and there's so much going on. So I don't want to disconnect, but at the same time, I want to start focusing in on, on the people in our community because you start looking around and there are some people doing some really amazing things uh, to promote this hobby and, you know, and there's so many different venues, not venues, but just um, ways you can pursue this hobby from the obviously the flight test aircraft and, and some of the stuff we're seeing there from John Overstreet recently and just some of the amazing work. And then you got gentlemen like Joshua Orchard. I'll throw it out there. What he did to to a plain Jane uh, balsa was amazing, you know, and the, the sheer amount of hours put into to this airplane, you know, it's just uh, you know, it's um, so there's so many people I want to engage. And I think moving forward, that will be uh, where where we most where we push forward with this podcast. So, like I said, grassroots, there are builders, uh, you know, uh, Ruben, we've had him on the show before. Uh, we haven't talked to Sean from uh, um, uh, Defiant, you know, I'd love to get Alex and poke his head about some of the FPV stuff because there have been some recent changes and we'll talk about later on the show we'll talk about the new um uh gear from dji <laughs> got it <laughs> it's friday and i'm on fire uh and and you know what are you guys all thinking about in the thing you know do we helis uh, i haven't flown a helicopter in forever i haven't flown my quads in forever and i want to get back into that as well and because i've got friends here who fly quads and they're pushing me in all kinds of different directions it's funny uh i maintain that uh ben harbert totally totally um, yes, Ben, Ben and I have had some really good chats while we were at flight fest and everything. And so I completely like get on that, get on, you can leave comments in the show. You can leave comments through the email, which is RC after hours podcast at gmail.com. Uh, even on the Facebook pro, uh, you know, page and part of the reason, like I said, going to changing things up and, and finding different ways to engage with everybody, um, is because I realized that a good number of the community isn't on Facebook. Um, so, I mean, there's so many ways to talk to me through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, email, YouTube, Tell Mike we miss him. Yeah, I miss the guys too. Chris and I have chatted on and off uh, this week and everything, and everybody's been busy. Even today for me, um, the show was almost a no-go just be because I was so overwhelmed with everything I'm dealing with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But I um, I fired up all the computers. Um, I know the stream isn't too good right now as far as it. Um, the the, the YouTube is telling me I'm, I'm, I'm packing too much bandwidth uh, to to it. So uh, if it's a little garbly, that's 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 what it is. Um, yes, uh, Steve's mentioning, uh, and we'll get into some talking about some of the, 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 the lack of vendors at Flight Fest. I'm totally able to engage on that subject matter. Um, and, uh, yes, and uh, Michael is asking about... Uh, Norman, and so we'll we'll get into all that in the uh, when I start talking about the reviews. So, um, keeping on topic right now, future shows. Yeah, 
hang on tight. I've got some really good ideas. I got some, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm pumped. Um, and, and you know, we're going to do a bunch of fun things. I'm, I'm, I've made a commitment to this show because of a lot of the comments I had at Flight Fest. A lot of people, when, when the rumblings were in, in, in the works that something was up and we were taking some holidays and breaks and everything, um, there were a lot of people who reached out to me and said, please, please, please keep keep the podcast going. There's so few shows seem to be going on right now. Um, and, and just, yeah. And I love this community so much. Um, what everybody gives in and what I draw from it as a person on a personal note it is just, it, it makes it worthwhile. It makes all the effort, all the energy very worthwhile. And uh, yeah, so this podcast is changing. I think the feel of it is going to change. And uh, I'm hoping everybody's in, in the game and really look forward to just having some fun. Hey, Skydiver Forever. Hello from New Brunswick. I've got friends who are on vacation who are from uh, New Brunswick enjoying some really good lobster right now. Mm, I haven't had lobster in a while. <laughs> okay, carrying on with uh, some of the things. I um, uh, One of the things I did recently was I took over control of the Patreon uh, account. And um, I, was, uh, I was hesitant to keep it going. I will admit the podcast doesn't need the funding, um, but uh, I started looking at the people who are funding the podcast and putting money in through the Patreon, and I know almost every one of them, uh, you know, or in, in, uh, to some degree, and so uh, it's a very personable thank you. I, I struggled with it, and I talked to a lot of my little inner circle of friends, and I talked to them about saying, I, the podcast doesn't need the funding. Um, so one of the things I am going to do, because I love transparency, I love that you guys know, um, uh, for, I, I want you to know what you're contributing to. So first thing I'm going to do, um, this most recent Patreon run will be the first one where the funds are coming directly to be to push towards the podcast so the first thing i'm gonna do is set up a google doc i'm um, ins and outs and what everything costs and uh it, you know it's going to cover the show it's going to cover the web services it's going to cover the podcast services but i'm going to do things investing in it and then we'll go from there um there have been a lot of people requesting stickers i'm about to do a massive run on stickers this will be a, a out-of-pocket expense for me because this is what it means the community means i bought a whack of these and i came back with more than i thought from ohio but it doesn't make sense for me to ship the bundle to someone in the u.s i've got friends who are going to help me do the distribution and thank you for everybody who offered i decided i would pick people i know because if we're distributing uh, uh if i'm doing any kind of mail out your personal addresses are in there so i'm picking people that i know the caliber and i can trust them because there's a database and again transparency trust and all this stuff it's it's what people build their careers on right so um yeah uh some other suggestions from joe uh would uh, would be neat to talk to Stuart and david vindestol and oh of course everybody's on the shopping list everybody is uh no one can hide i even approached but uh, i put john oversteer on the spot and he declined because he said it was too nervous so wonderful individual had a really good one-on-one -on -one chat with him while i was in ohio and everything so we're really going to ratchet this thing and tune it in and so people come up with your suggestions keep them firing i'll keep a note from the documents here and then email and just we're going to build this thing we're going to start scheduling people and we're going to have fun throughout the year and i'm going to do what's important to this hobby i'm going to go flying uh for those watching behind me there's norman there's a rating with a new module we're going to talk about that and then there's that mamba and we'll talk about me trying to fly the mamba for the first time and it not going so cool so but that's uh that's all fun stuff so on the patreon thank you um it sounds weird but there were a couple of people who dropped off and i completely respect it i sent them a note saying thank you for for their previous uh commitment and everything um and i i had to be careful because it almost borderline felt personal and it shouldn't but then i really started diving in there and there was so many names and so many people that i've interacted with over the years so like i said um 
if you decide that it's not for you, I completely respect that and understand that. Um, but my commitment to this podcast is that if you are, you will know what your funds are being used for. So it's things like setting up the pod bean and paying it for a whole year. Setting up, I haven't decided whether I should host the, the website on the existing one because that's really expensive for what it is. Um, and whether I need a website or not, I can probably host it off my own server and, and go from there. Uh, Jack the Ripper asks, is that the module from Brian? Yes, it is in my in my Radiant, and we'll talk about that. I'll grab it. It's currently actually plugged into a 12-volt power supply, so I wouldn't toast a battery. It is cool. I haven't flown the Radiant with the new stuff because I'm ripping out the Spectrum and everything. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm excited. It's Friday night. It's it's actually you know nice to finally relax and enjoy, and uh, I'm loving the interaction here on the on the questions and everything. Um, it looks like YouTube could work out. I may have to solicit some backup moderators down the road since it's a one man show, and I've got like. I've got a main computer right here with the camera. I got another one doing the live stream. I've got my laptop watching the stream and I've got my tablet here so I can read my show notes. It's a little crazy uh, for one person, but I think it's going to work. And once we get those guests in there, we'll be able to engage and just have a lot of fun uh, through Skype and everything. And just, yeah, why not, right? We've got nothing to lose to try this out. Um, I clearly have the gift of gab and can talk for, for, for no time at all. And as long as I get some water, I'm good to go. So jumping into my notes, show future, like I said, um, there are, you know, like I said, grass root, the builders, we got all these guys, helis, ground vehicles. Are, are you guys opposed to talking about ground vehicles? Yay or nay? I love my RC trucks. Yesterday, I drove the Armin Infraction. The thing is mental. Like, I love my low C6S truck. This thing is like, it's basically a race sedan on 6S. It was nutty. Um, it's so choppy wherever you drive it, and you know, but you're doing like donuts. It's so it's a it's a total hooning vehicle. Like just, just crazy. I don't think you can get these things up to top speed. And I haven't even pushed my poor RC truck, the uh, the low C, anywhere through its limits yet. So I'm looking forward to that. And then again, I got that for those days when I can't fly 6S. Now, I am very committed to going flying those jets of mine um so later on this week and uh, next week i have the opportunity where i'm going to be able to get out and do some serious flying with it and and exactly it uh you know and just get out and if the weather's junk well then i got the trucks so and that's where the crawlers came into it. and then it got into another you know the, the the slash and i'm like oh then the monster truck the stampede and i love the traxxas stuff so uh and and yeah, the skydiver says uh, not opposed to cars, and he and he does the FPV. We did it last year. We the guys were here, and we did the FPV in the backyard, and it was the funniest thing. Uh, I think a group of us, and we all laughed and said like the, our collective age is twelve at this point, and it was just fun because it was too dark, too darn cold to fly, but we just had a really good time, and uh, it's yeah, and so it's all. I think it's part of the hobby. It really is part of the hobby. Um, and if you do it right, it doesn't have to be overly expensive. These things are expensive, unfortunately. And that silly truck was just nutty. So here we go. Do we want to dive into products or do we want to keep the conversation going about what we think the show is going to be like trucks? I don't know anything about trucks. John Davis. Yes. <laughs> this is for you, buddy. Look at that. Blame Andre. John, 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 my friend has more kids uh, than, well, five kids, right, John? So here he is sitting there, you know, every time Andre gets a new truck, it's like, oh, Andre, they want another truck. But his kids are awesome. I had a really good time meeting meeting his youngest who, who got to go on this trip and everything. Uh, what's the new deal? Joe asks, What? Uh, how are you dealing with the new transport regulations? Uh, are you starting a club? So myself, I've gone out and I did the test. And uh, basically, if you read the letter, we where we fly, I fly. I don't fly in a club. Um, I could join a club, and if I have to, I will. I just I I haven't done the club thing in a long time. I was in the sports car clubs. I was in the race car clubs, and da 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 da. Um, and when I got into RC flying, um, it was a secondary hobby. So I'm kind of just hanging out with my buddies there. And so I fly by the rules. Uh, we, we avoid people. We stay up in altitude and da 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 and, and stay within our low weight classes. I have my identification on all my aircraft or in my aircraft around there. And I, 
I'm a certified drone pilot. So whenever I fly my Phantom, it's registered with uh, with uh, Transport Canada, and I've got my uh, information all sitting on my phone and in my packaging and everything. So I'm uh, I'm legal. Um, do I need the advance? Nah, for what I do. I don't think so. And until until we are told we can't fly where we're flying, I'm gonna we're just gonna hang out and enjoy it. Um, lately, the strategy has been quite simple: get out there, fly before eight o'clock, and then get home and go. And that's I think we've been I've been doing that for the longest while because it allows me to go fly, get home, get back to to doing all the other stuff, and uh, and just have a good time. And so far, so good. And uh, it's funny because the spring started off really slow for for obvious reasons. It took me a lot of time to get my bandwidth, get my speed back up, get into a normal routine with everything I'm dealing with in life. And um, it's uh, so Flight Fest was really good for breaking that habit and getting getting back into stuff. And and we flew last weekend. I flew Norman. I had a blast with Norman once I got the power all sorted out. And, uh, it was, um, it might be neat to have, oh yeah, I got to keep reading this. I mean, I keep getting subtracted, uh, distracted by all the online channel. Keep going guys. And I'll keep looking at this stuff. Now, uh, what was I saying? Okay. So I, I got off flying on the weekend and we had fun with Norman, which was a really good build and we'll get there in a couple of minutes. And then I, I went to try and fly the Mamba and the guys were all standing here waiting to go. And, um, for anybody who's flown a, uh, a flex aircraft, they're very particular about that flight controller, and I noticed I had some discrepancies. I went to take off, and anybody who's seen the Mamba, they've got these serrated edges on the side, and the running joke was that's just to slice things as you're going by. Well, I didn't have enough elevator throw for whatever reason on the Mamba, and so it came along, and I was trying to get it off the ground, and she skirted a little bit. And before I could cur- straighten it out to avoid the, um, uh, I run off a gravel strip, and I, I, I cut the grass and cartwheeled the, my brand new airplane down the, the field. So, um, unfortunately, I was like, hmm. And so, after I looked at it, I was kind of like, yeah, that elevator throw is really low. So, I plugged it into the computer. There's a post on social media about that, and that's the only subtraction from a flex aircraft is to do any kind of tweaking. you got to plug the thing into a computer. I think it's time for them to really look at the next generation of their, their processors and, um, you know, Bluetooth and a phone. You know, and off we go. We can do little tweaks. I've added more up um, up elevator. I fixed the issues with the remote because I had reversed a servo on the remote. And then when I would trim, obviously the trim was doing opposite because it's a controller. So anybody who flies quads, this is no big deal, right? But to the plane guys, this is a this is a little bit of a different environment. So. That airplane is now that ready to go. I went from 22 to 35 on my um, my weights, my travel on the elevator. Talking with Chris Gooden, he figures from the factory they might have offset the elevator's tooth or, or uh, arm on the tooth on the servo, and so I probably just got to take the wings off and get in there and readjust it. So. Yeah, I, I can't wait to fly this airplane. The Mamba 10 is gorgeous. If they had had the 60, ooh, I would have bought the 60 because I got those 6X Pass. But um, things were getting a little crazy around here. If anybody's seen photos about all the other planes, I, I, I kind of went overboard last year. So the 10 is just right. It is just the right size. It takes up just enough space to look nice. It runs on 3S. Maybe I'll do the 4S. I've been told it will fly in 4S with no upgrades. So maybe I'll, I'll go to 4S 2200 for the punch. Um, but I love biplanes. Um, so yeah, I can't wait. I use Companion on my Q7, so I play all the time. Yeah, like uh, it, most of us plug in the PCs and everything, so it becomes second nature. But the issue I was, was at the field, I couldn't triage anything with this airplane at the field, right? So it was like, okay, take it back to the bench. It's a brand new airplane. Don't risk it. So, so there's the Mamba. So Mamba flight reviews will come probably next week after I have my opportunity to go flying with it, and uh, we'll have a good time with it. I think... Um, we all know my previous history with the Flex Jet. I think the Flex, uh, this thing is a good pairing. It is expensive by Canadian dollars. It's 300 US, almost 400 Canadian. Ouch, right? Ouch. But I think you get a lot of bang for buck. Um, I want to change the receiver in that airplane, actually, uh, going into the Mamba. And let's just switch this thing over here. I'm going to switch. And we'll talk about some of the specs for the Mamba. Do, do, do. Mamba, Mamba, Mamba. Where's the Mamba? A10, 
Uh, Mamba. All right. So here we go. And we'll do that. There we go. There's the Mamba. Uh, I like the red Mamba over the green Mamba. I don't know why. It just looks good. I like. Actually, sorry. The Mamba 70 in yellow looks fantastic. <laughs> yellow flies faster, right? Um, but it's not an overwhelming airplane. It's not crazy size. I'm just going to flip over to the specs and we'll talk about it here. Specs. So, length. 43.3, 43.4 inches, 100 and, uh, 1,102 millimeters. It's got a 40.7 inch wingspan, so 1,033 millimeters. It weighs about 1,500 grams with a 3S 2200 and has a wing area of, well, I don't know, 700 square feet, uh, square inches, <laughs> feet. And, Anywhere from a, oh, actually, hey, look at that. It says it'll take anywhere from a 2100 to a 3300 3S uh, 40C. So that's cool. I actually might be able to run this thing on a bigger battery if I'm so inclined. Um, yes, Eddie, you do need one. It's a fantastic airplane. Now, I had a couple interesting... Um, uh, a couple of interesting little setups issues with mine. I was trying to use a, what was that? That was just a regular uh, four, uh, sp uh, not four, <laughs> FR Sky uh, XR4 or X4R or whatever it's called. Uh, and I could not get this thing for the life of me. I couldn't get it to ch talk to it over the um, S bus. So I kind of just said, okay, fine. It's not playing right. It's a, uh, so I put it in an eight, which is a complete waste of uh, a complete waste of, of gear. So I'm thinking one of those. If I change the connector on one of my um, quadcopter ones, I might be able to get away with it, but I don't know yet. So I'm gonna have to get in there and dial around and play with it. But it does have a flight stabilizer, so it's got three modes right off the bat. That's unstabilized minimum throws. Stabilize with with uh, minimal throws. So that's your aerobatic mode, and then full on stabilize. And like the throws on that elevator, the elevator will actually touch the ground when it's you know on the ground, which is crazy. So it's um it's got some power to it. So uh, me outdoors, is he's got the QQ extra, yeah. And you know what? Also, all oh, that Rav. The RAV-8 looks so good, but that's a big airplane. That's, like, it's up there with the, um, my E-Flight uh, Commander. That's a huge airplane as far as, like, space in the hangar kind of thing, and it looks really good. Um, but, uh, yeah, so spec-wise, here we go. Let me go back through these specs and find these for you guys. So it's got a 1,400 kV uh, uh, motor. 50 amp ESC. It's got shark teeth, and that's what those are called. And I tell you, those shark teeth were really good at digging into the astroturf, not the astroturf, the grass. Uh, 11 by 5, 4.5 pitch uh, prop, which is fairly handy and, and nice. Uh, I do need to get some extra props and everything. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it is a nice looking airplane. So uh, view large photos. I don't think I have any extra photos on the site. Anyhow, back to talking about the setup. So, Setup was fine on the radio and all this. And I guess one of the benefits of a system like this is you you set your rates to 125, and so your weights and no rates, and it's all mixed in the in the in the onboard computer, which is cool, which is easy. Um, and I guess once you get used to that, it's not such a big deal. So I don't know. I'll let you know once I get it flying. I'm I'm looking so excited. Um, I am flying it off some really old my old a spec batteries uh man those things are starting to show their age but i'm going to keep trying it uh if not i'll try it on like a maybe a 3s 4000 might fit in there i'll let you know as far as getting the cg i like fly stuff flying stuff with forward cg anyhow um all right, now we were talking about all the stuff from Flight Fest, and we will talk about a couple of things, vendor stuff and everything. But that Radian module from the guys is super. Let me find that because, all right, Wingnut Tech. All right, products. Let's go to the website, and I'll describe this thing. So I have done previously a controller, which was pretty neat, um, from uh, um, Laserbeak. And that was pretty cool. Now, if you were running the stock Spectrum receiver, you had to modify it. And there's a whole video I did about this. And uh, it was quite the process. And you could scroll through existing 
uh, designs. Now, what really turned me to liking this this night radiant LED controller is the fact that it's got a built-in barometer uh, and it's an Arduino board. So Brian and his son Alex figured out that, well, not figured out, the lights are all addressable. And um, so on the wing tips, on the right wing tip, green tips, and with flashing lights above. And on the left, you get your other nav right red. And then when the Vario system is activated, you get altitude indication on the wings. Uh, so every light on the inner 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. It's just amazing. And then on the tail, when you're up, when you're climbing, it's green. When you're diving, it's red. When you're level, it's white. You know. And then you get the whole gamut of lights. And anybody watching the live stream can see it going off behind me. And these are all tweakable through your radio. Um, I find it a little sensitive. I've, I've run it on my slider on my, uh, my Tyrannus. And I find it a little aggressive. Uh, the dial works better. Um, I find so what I'm going to try and do is when I'm playing with the next uh, I'm going to see if I can add a little slowness to the uh, to the control to the and just see if that allows you because you're like oh I found the sitting I like and then it ticks back and then you're like oh I found it and so I'm going to play with that and I haven't actually gotten my board to actually display um, uh, any of the uh, the lights uh, and the the altitude indication brian's like get it up in the air it'll work once it picks up some altitude so i'm like okay so i gotta button this all up i gotta pull everything out and the other thing i did and i don't have the link for this guy but i picked up the little from fr sky the little receiver uh the little six channel with the vario which is so tiny so small compared to what i'm running in my stock radian um yeah so I'm excited about that. So that airplane is going to be coming together. It's going to see a lot of action. And, uh, you know, it seems like I'm going to have a couple of aircraft with LED lights um, moving forward for, for Flight Fest next year. Norman. Norman's coming with me. Um, Lane uh, single-handedly managed to save my flying. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Frank. Yes, that's the, uh, the GRX uh, 6R. It's a nice piece of equipment i'm looking forward to running it six channel and was it was what i was looking for for that airplane and, and uh that'll be able to control the airplane the lights if i do future fpv and all this stuff so moving on the norman uh on the uh form for a uh, flight test i put the build for this guy <laughs> it's like hot glue i used um uh, gorilla glue, white gorilla glue because that's what i had to do all the wood pieces and initially i had set it up on a smaller motor and I really was overpowering that motor. It was really sluggish and everything. Uh, so I'm running a 480 size Park Zone motor, and it's a 12 by 6 prop. Initially, I was running like 1155, and it didn't. It took off. It flew, and it was so comical. Um, it was. It was like if anything went wrong, I had no way I was going to control this airplane. I had no extra power or anything. So we switched to a 12 by 6, and it was a lot better. And uh, it's got a full, the wings are lit up, so um, uh, it's got red and green and a little bit of white. And then I just took a whole string, so we're talking 16 feet, 5 meters, I think, of white LED lights. And I just ran them through the inside of the belly, and the thing just glows. Um, so I'll probably run that on a 3S4000 as well. And it flew, and we got it up there, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, Steve, are you replying to uh, Norman? Norman is a, um, Norman's a three-channel. I went with a, the normal Norman. Nifty Norman is the four-channel. Uh, again, uh, look for the shore notes. I link it to Lane's Planes. Um, I'm going to pick up the Nifty Norman's wing for the future because uh, I enjoyed flying it. But, uh, you know, the, the having a wing with the dihedral, it was so simple to fly. And that uh, that rudder has so much authority. Uh, you can toss it around and move it in each way you want. So I'm like, okay, this is good. We're going to fly. We're going to have fun. And uh, next up, so he's all painted up. He's got LED lights on his eyes. If you watch any social media, he's going to be goofy fun. And so... Um, it, it's, uh, um, yeah. And, and there's another guy we're going to have on the show. Lane. Lane's talked about coming on and being a co, uh, being a guest and everything. Cause Lane's doing all kinds of fun stuff. We were talking like about a, a you know, a medium sized, uh, Norman versus, uh, you know, a, a big norm, uh, because there's no way I could ever fit a giant Norman in my car. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, and the build is so simple guys. Like, um, 
I, I would throw a, an e, I throw a battery in there to show the lights, but I have it on a, a little Beck board and the power supply, so the ESC just starts chiming away. But he's bright. Look at the photos on my social media and everything. And and so I went up and flew after I got the twelve uh, the twelve by six on. And my buddy there, Steve, who's a captain drone, he's got a really nice uh, YouTube channel. Um, he managed just to do a couple quick orbits around Norman with his with his quad and i got a couple neat photos of it and he it looks so comical in the air he looks so sly with his eyebrows you know and he's kind of like yep i fly so next uh next order of business for him is some some cow spots so we'll get some black paint out and splotch him up so he looks like a cow and put a silly little grin on his face and this is going to be my night flyer slash just goofing around flyer the one thing i noticed this year for flight fest was all my foam planes if they weren't the waterproof foam board just got so soaked um like that water bomber was great and my water bomber <laughs> the bomber the pink bomber was so saturated by the end of the event that it just it wouldn't have flown so i just said okay enough so this thing takes over on my goofy flyer my night flyer i st- and then obviously i got the night radian so there are like two really good night flying aircraft um and I will get the night reading, and I will bring it with me next time I go because it's ridiculous not going. And, uh, you know, it's just I don't be able to have fun and flip through the channels and everything. So it's it's a really good aircraft, and I'm starting to build that 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 little bit of, you know, notice and, and experience from the event. We all said it this year. We brought way too many planes. There's a, there's a picture of my tent, and it's ridiculous. So next year I'm really, really going to pull it back. Um, I often wonder two radians or one uh the regular radian if we do the fly off and next year i will make sure we get the uh, light light the mamba you can get the mamba lit up um i don't know how hard it would be to do it on your own i'm gonna have to look that up um that's a recommendation from steve um yeah that airplane lit up it looked pretty cool wouldn't be hard to light the fuselage i just don't know about the wings um they run it through but it was like another hundred dollars us so that gets a little crazy um and i don't really think i'm that talented of a pilot (laughs) so all right uh should we do some product reviews and talk about this week because there were some pretty neat things going on um let's jump into that so i'm going to flip over to the websites and we'll uh we'll go from there so again check out uh wingnut uh tech that is wingnuttech.com for the night radian fly uh, LED controller. Brian tells me he's getting a lot of interest from it, which is awesome. And again, um, talking to him and Alex, they are putting up, uh, they're going to do some instruction, uh, F, uh, frequently asked questions and, and S- SOP manual stuff. So everybody will be able to see uh, what they need to do. Also, the code is going to be going up on GitHub. So you'll be able to customize your own thing but the nice thing with with what they've done is they can program all kinds of sequences so they have the cylon and all this stuff and and like i said the vario is supremely cool and what was really interesting to me too is this thing runs off five volts the led lights run off five volts if you didn't know that which surprised the heck out of me um i was expecting them to need a little bit more punch because they're but then again, it's coming off. Anyhow, they powered off the receiver. I may put a separate U back in there and just go from there because obviously now that my warranty is up, I can get rid of that uh, EC5 and go with an XT60, right, and put a little pigtail and a little 5-volt converter uh, U back and power that. So we shall see. Okay, so I'm going off my notes here. Uh, and I do, and I am doing show notes, believe it or not. That was something I was working on last night. So big, 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 big from Avios is that little, uh, the MiG-17, 1200 millimeter, 90 millimeter EDF, the MiG-17 Fresco, 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 Fresco. Um, wow. Eh? I mean, this thing is pretty crazy looking, uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, it's a little interesting to see that they went this way. Uh, well, not with this. I shouldn't say that. We knew this was coming. Steve had told us this was coming for a while. Uh, the video looked good, and uh, it looks impressive. Um, what struck me was how much it cost. It's already backordered, which we always know that happens with Hobby King. Um, I, it was... Price-wise, I think for me from the global warehouse uh, was like 85 US to ship. So this aircraft very quickly becomes a six or seven hundred dollar Canadian aircraft. So mm, it's a little a little hefty in price, but 
It is gorgeous. And this is something that Steve had been working on and telling us about for a while. Uh, Spec-wise, 90mm 12-blade EDF. Um, it uses... Uh, it is a 35, 41, 15, 50 kV 6S brushless outrunner motor, 100 amp ESC. Uh, it's got one 12 gram uh, servo uh, and a couple uh, an 11 9 gram servos. So it's got some stuff in there. I'm actually drinking a fresco right now, Jason. <laughs> It doesn't look the same as this thing. So it does take a 5,000 amp, uh, 5,000 milliamp, 6S, 45 to 75C, and 6 to 7 channel RC radio. So again, gorgeous, gorgeous airplane. Love the colors. Surprised it doesn't have any um, any decals with it besides the uh, the camo theme, whether that's just the, the photo up that they used for this. Uh, the video looked great. It flew nice. It was really smooth. Um so I'm I'm stoked about it. My notes, my show notes have turned off. So give me two seconds here, uh, and we'll keep yakking away about what's next. Uh, at the same time, they put out their new updated Orange RX 10XI. Um, so if you're you know ever in the market for a Spectrum uh, or DSMX compatible radio. I guess this would be a reasonable price. It does look kind of nice size-wise, um, and they seem every time they do a revision, they seem to get it a little better. Um, so it's uh, it looks like a decent little radio. I actually have one of the older ones and never found the man the the, the, the navigations on this thing <laughs> intuitive at all. But I mean, it runs off AA batteries, uh, or I think you can convert it to a battery port. There's a shot there, AA batteries. And we'll do everything. Uh, it is the big cousin of the 6i, which makes sense. So you have your Chen channels. Uh, you can do a little. It does have a USB port, so I'm thinking you can do a little programming to it. And, um, yeah, there's just, it's options, I guess, if you really, really need them. I kind of wish they would go back to making really decent modules for, for the guys that do run non-spectrum uh, transmitters. Uh, because it's, it's kind of handy. That last batch of transmitter modules were pretty useful or useless i should say um yeah maybe buy this rip it apart make a module i don't know there's always kind of things uh so yeah all right next piece of equipment fms has done it uh i you know what <laughs> i'm i'm gonna be i've i know uh pilot ryan and captain mike uh, I have talked about this aircraft. I haven't watched their review yet, but the A10 version 2 from FMS, the A10 Thunderbolt 2 V2 70 mm um, basically upgraded landing gear, upgraded ESCs, a little bit of finessing here and there. I haven't even flown mine. That is on my hit list for the fall uh, and will happen. <laughs> I say that a lot, but that's the way it is. Um, you know, it's just, uh, and it looks really good. I should have probably just gone right to the FMS page because they actually have more pictures. But uh, I like the, I dig the camo theme. Uh, really, I don't think there's much wrong with the, the, the first one. I know the upgrades are key and everything, and maybe over time I'll pick up some of the spare parts. I do have the better ESCs and everything on standby for mine, so needs a dem desert cam. The desert cam does look good. Um, I don't mind the gray either. I have the old one. It looks nice. Uh, I can't wait to fly it. One day I'll work up the courage and everything. Um, if I get out flying the EDF jets this weekend, I think it's going to be the FMS Yak, and then I definitely got to fly that Hawk because they're really nice trainer jets that should fly really well. Um, so, pumped. Speaking of EDFs, we talked about this one last time, but whoo, the Havoc. Oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Uh, 400 US green Kind of mean looking machine, uh, spec wise. What do we got here? Where are those specs? Give me those specs. So, this is from E Flight. Uh, do, 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 do. Come on, E Flight 100 amp ESC, 2000 kV motor, takes a 6S 4000 to 8000 milliamp. Uh, 13 gram metal servos, full transmitter range, wingspan 41 inches. So, this thing looks mean. It, uh, I, you know, if you want to melt your, your, your brains and have some fun, this thing is a sport flyer. Um, so it's interesting to watch E-Flight slowly creep into this market and start getting aggressive. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, all this competition. 
Uh, they have, uh, you know, nice little magnetic cap and everything. Uh, so far, the reviews, according to Victor, have been good and bad and definitely not as fast as they claim. Oh, fascinating. Fascinating. But, you know, it's a start. Uh, you know, they're, whether it's a, I don't know if it's a, it's a full-on development from from eFlight or if they've just picked up someone else's product. The gear looks good and everything. Um, but I kind of like uh, my sport flyers. I think I'm going to stick with the prop jobs for the sport flyers and these EDFs. We'll, we'll see how I do. I think the Hawk and the Yak are, you know, they're, they're nice. And they, I guess you need the environment also. Um, I don't have the biggest flying field. And I really, I really felt when I flew the flex jet that I was chewing up airspace really aggressively. So we'll see. We'll have to watch the market for this thing and, and keep an eye on, on some of the things. All right. So we've talked about the Radian module. That is pretty cool and everything. So we'll, we'll keep moving from there. Again, check those guys out, wingnuttech.com. Tell Brian I sent you. Maybe we'll have to get him to do a coupon code for RC After Hours. <laughs> All right. So next up was DGI. J-I? J-I? G-I? Did it, didn't I? Um, they came out with a digital... Um, uh, uh, DJI digital FPV system, expensive because they they bundle in with their remote and their the goggles look. You know what? The goggles I have to say look awesome. You look like some kind of alien bug, but boy, they look fun. So I uh, I'm kind of curious to see how this um, this will do in the marketplace, uh, but. Geez, you know, like finally, we we had speculated this stuff was coming, and it took a little longer than I expected. And the day after, of course, Fat Shark talks about what do they call their system? The Fat Shark calls the 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 the, the um, bite frost bite uh, the Fat Shark bite frost, which is kind of a, a neat little marketing name. Um, but here we go, finally, digital FPV getting away from the analog transmission. So, we, you know, we're we're getting into the twenty first century. Now, what we saw from the DJI system is they incorporate their transmitter, their goggles, and the remote. Obviously, uh, they're using all their technology. And and the other week when I flew the Phantom 4 V2 Pro, whatever they want to call it, I was really impressed with that new um, the new video transmission protocol over Lightbridge. Uh, it was way better, and that display was way better. So this stuff is coming on. This is expensive. Uh, and a lot of people were like, you know, well, why can't you just get the transmitter and the goggles and everything? I don't want to buy another remote. But if you're starting off fresh, and this is something that you absolutely want, your digital stuff, why not, right? I mean, it's, uh, what, entry-level 800, but... You figure what two hundred bucks for a good set of f, uh, you know, fat shark goggles, maybe more than that. What are they now? Like three hundred dollars. Uh, a really decent remote. Okay, you don't get onboard screening, but I'm gonna assume that all your menu and everything drive through your goggles. So very much like some of the the blade uh, technology. Um, you know, so all your heads up display information is on your goggles. So you just look in your goggles. They got share modes and everything. It looks. They've done their homework. Um, the timing is kind of curious. I wonder if they were trying to beat each other to the market because, like I said, um, uh, Fat Shark released their their tweet right away, uh, like the next day. But either way, imagine this thing. O- OSD works with Beta Flight. Oh, that's kind of cool. So according to uh, the King, uh, the Craft King number one, that's kind of neat. So you can do your tweaks and change your stuff, put your name on it and everything. That's neat. Why not, right? Why not let it be controlled so people can put their 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 tags into it and do what kind of line and visuals they want to see and you know any kind of markers. Uh, it makes sense to just pair your technology with existing technology. It, it, it's clever and it's it's you know, and then you can sit there and go, fine, this thing is going to work on my quad controller and da 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 da. Off you go. So, hey. You know what? It's going to start and, you know, within six months we'll have other people pushing out digital products. And maybe this is where, you know, FPV events will become a little better. 8, 10, 12 aircraft, you know, using, um, I mean, digital technology uses less power. You get more penetration uh, if you can maintain the single. And they were showing some pretty cool stuff where the breakup versus the two of them 
Um, <laughs> me, uh, Emmy Outdoors is still rocking his teleporter V3s. I loved my teleporters. You know, they, you know, I flew through everything with those. Literally flew through stuff because I couldn't see it. So, um, I'm still rocking my old, uh, my old uh, goggles, and you know, they work great. I flew. FPV for the first time in a really long time at Flight Fest after on the Sunday, and I was shooting some gaps after I relaxed and, and everything. Um, but here we go, finally. Like a, we've been waiting on digital technology for the for the FPV stuff for a while. Um, I can't wait to see where it goes, and hopefully we're not bound to some of the, the the limitations. Heck, I would run my old goggles if they just changed the receiver and everything. So who knows? But um, one thing I did notice in that video that I uh, everybody else didn't see or, or no one commented on was the one pilot was wearing glasses and popped the goggles on and went flying. So if the goggles are good enough to let you do it, and I've experienced the um, uh, I flew with their with the Mavic <laughs> and their goggles, the the DJI goggles, uh, a couple of years ago, and really liked it. Hey, ooh ooh ooh! Speaking of goggle tech, I experienced the Oculus uh, Quest uh, setup the other week. Uh, a coworker brought it in, and uh, it was really good. To um, it was really really, it was immersive. Uh, I was shooting up some aliens and everything. So all this technology. Imagine that, though, in the future that where you're, um, you know, your camera and you can fly around on a platform and you can do 360, you know, and everything. So, uh, yeah. So it's uh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Uh, uh, Justin, uh, Austin asks, I wonder how many people will give up their analog for this though, especially in a thousand. You know what? Give it six months, give it a year and this stuff will come in line. Uh, I don't think analog is going to go right away. It's going to go away, uh, right away, but I can see the stuff. The marketplace will get saturated and the prices will start coming down. Competition, uh, will be good. So, I'm just excited. I just, uh, if it is feasible and everything and it makes FPV a little bit more manageable, um, rock and roll. So cool. All right. Back to my notes. I really got to extend my, uh, my time out on my tablet this evening as I'm rambling away. Uh, we talked about the Mamba and we talked about Lane's Plains. So that's pretty well it for the reviews, I think. So that's, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, and, uh, geez. So, Shoot through uh, how, how long we've been going for on this podcast so far. Uh, it's almost an hour. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. So um, I'm going to keep pushing for, uh, you know, start sending in your, um, your crash stories. If we want to get back into that, I have no problem reading off some crash stories. Uh, I could see, and Justin's also, Jason Austin's also saying, I could see someone on, on high-end drones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's you know they're basically pulling its stuff off the Phantoms. They're they're bigger quads and making them modular. So very like what we saw with the uh, 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 when GoPro went after the other camera manufacturer. Uh, you know, and they they just turned everything into they started making their Swift Minis and stuff like this. Uh, you know, Run Cam. Thank you. There, brain's ticking away still at ten o'clock at night. Uh, you know, the technology, it's uh, innovation, necessity, and everything. So watch those guys. You know, maybe they're going to say, okay, let's jump into the system. Now, what what these guys, DJI has proven technology with their uh, with their 2.4 and 5.2 and uh, their gigahertz setups and more jumps and pops and everything. Now, will it interfere with standard drones? Probably. Probably going to see some 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 single confl- conflicts. Um yeah, it adds 150. Yeah, it's all this stuff is going to, pardon me, cost a little bit of money. But if you're starting off, why not, right? But at the same time, it would suck to crash and blow a, a transmitter module, right? So who knows? Uh, yeah, crash stories. Hey, go on to, uh, if you're an iTunes subscriber, go on to iTunes and uh, by all means, you know, leave a comment and everything. It helps us shoot back up to the top. Uh, I keep saying us, but I'm going to say we, us as in globally, everybody promotes the podcast and everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you uh, again for uh, being, hanging out with us. Uh, what about a radiation on us? <laughs> I don't think it's any worse than standing beside your microwave. Um, again, um, and a quick, um, 
Quick shout out to Get FBV. Um, they are uh, they've been very gracious in, in extending the after hours code. Uh, that's eight percent off your purchase and everything. Uh, and expires at the end of the year. They do have a go to getfpv. Uh, dot com slash fpv dash drones uh, dash coupon talks about some of the conditions and everything uh, but again pretty cool they aren't sponsoring the show yet I'm going to uh, have a I'll try and have a good chat with them I figured I'd give them a chance to see how the new format looks and how it feels uh, and would uh, go from there so uh, but by all means they've been really good friends to our um, uh, they've been really good friends about uh, supporting the podcast in the past and you guys have been awesome using them as a uh, as a uh, supplier source, um, this weekend, um, uh, the uh, ready-made RC stuff is going on down at the uh, Edgewater facility. So uh, that is pretty cool to see. Uh, our podcast friend, Eddie Black, is out there having a good time. Uh, I don't know if he's continuing watching because it's, you know, it's a lot of bandwidth to uh, hang out and everything. But, hey, you know... Um, not bad for a Friday night. I'm going to keep working on the show, keep adding that format, keep generating content and everything. Uh, it is called, Eddie Black is telling me, it is called FPV Fest. FPV Fest. Uh, and it's kind of neat to see come of the, he has stickers. Eddie Black has RC After Hour stickers. He, um, he's uh, quite ready to give them out. Uh, and if you look for, if, if you want stickers, by all means, drop me a note. We'll get the, uh, we'll get some over to our friends in the U.S. and uh, we'll get them all distributed out to everybody, and uh, we'll spread the word and have some fun. So give me a chance to keep everything regrouped, and as like I said, as I ideas percolate and formulate and everything, and we'll keep having a lot of fun with this podcast. So thank you for everybody hanging out uh, and uh, have some fun. <laughs> Uh, the boys you know what i actually wish i could have been down there too for this weekend to see how uh, an event edgewater goes um it would have been kind of cool just to hang out and see that a venue but i don't think i could handle back-to-back events this uh, this this close uh it is kind of unfortunate that it is a nine hour ten hour drive but that is life so we'll uh we'll try and get eddie in and the guys uh, uh you know to talk about the event maybe next week or the week after and we'll uh, we'll see what kind of frequency, what kind of fun we can have. We'll go in. Um, I know everybody wants to do a, a call-in show, so maybe we'll have some fun once I figure out the technology behind all that. So, ah, I'm Andre. You've been listening to me ramble and discuss and chat with everybody on the RC After Hours podcast. Again, thank you for everybody uh, for joining us and uh, having a fun little evening. And, yeah, I do have all our soundtracks. So, there we go. I'm Andre. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for continuing to be uh, your support. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun in the next couple of weeks and months growing this podcast and and turning it into something um, that is really, really community driven. And uh, yeah, I, um, I can't wait to see what we do in the future. So again, thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic evening.